In addition to coal and renewable energies, Europe also relies on nuclear power. But it's not without its risk, as the world learned from the disasters of Chernobyl and Fukushima. The problem of toxic nuclear waste disposal is another good reason to reconsider this form of energy. The Finns in the north of Europe think they've come up with a solution. Is that right, Joy? Yes, Auntie, that's right. The Finnish government has constructed a deep bunker designed to hold high-level waste, which will remain radioactive for 100,000 years. It's the world's first permanent nuclear waste repository, and despite the risks, the government's plan is largely supported by the country's citizens. A nuclear power plant just 10 kilometers outside Rama in southwestern Finland. It's been in service for three decades. And a third reactor is under construction here. Soon, the world's first ever final repository for nuclear waste will be located here too. It'll be buried deep underground, surrounded by a layer of solid rock. The plan is to store nuclear waste there for 100,000 years. In most countries, a permanent nuclear waste storage facility would spark protests, or at least be seen as a cause for concern. If the politicians tell us it's safe, then it is. It's the right location. I trust the technicians. They're Finnish. They don't seem to be worried about the potential risks here. One of the passengers on that bus thinks otherwise, though. I'm uh, rather ashamed that we are doing it so fast. Of course, we should put the nuclear waste somewhere, but but not so. It's it's not so easy. We want to see where the spent fuel will be stored, and travel underground to a depth of 420 meters below sea level. These billion-year-old rock walls are supposed to contain the radiation. We're joined by Tapio, a geologist and a power plant employee. The plan is to drill hundreds of eight-meter deep holes into the rock. That'll enable nuclear fuel rods encased in copper to be inserted. It has many stages where we gather all the research information, what we have, and then make a decision that is it possible to make the hole or not. It's a maze of tunnels. It will take 100 years until all of Finland's nuclear waste will be sealed in here. And 100,000 years until the radiation subsides. But who knows for sure what will happen in 100,000 years? I don't know. The rock itself stays as it is. If there's, well, of course, if there's an ice age, then we ha are going to have some rock lifting going, all rock is being put down, but um, otherwise it's, it's hard to see. If you think backwards at the same time, uh, there are millions of things that have happened during that time. But and this will be safe? This will be safe. Not even the fear of an ice age seems to be able to rattle the Finnish people, even if that prospect could destroy the tunnel system. I think anyhow this is better place than, than keep the radioactive used fuel, fuel outside. But the waste will also be surrounded by a wall of silence. The plan seems to be to try and forget about the facility. Everything's already settled and the inhabitants here know that a protest would fall on deaf ears. In this area they are afraid there has been some so much pressure for those who, who, are, who have shouted these thing, things out. As we return home, doubts remain. For instance, how thick will the rock walls need to be to withstand the force of nature? It's a question that doesn't seem to be at the forefront of most people's minds here.
The leopard is one of the most majestic species in Africa and one of the most threatened. A leopard skin is a symbol of power used, for example, in the religious rituals of the South African Zulu people. As leopard numbers decline, a conservation group is hoping to reduce poaching by producing artificial furs for ceremonial attire. Now the question is, are Zulu warriors willing to switch to fake fur for the sake of the animals? When members of the Shembe Church in northeastern South Africa gather, they dance. For their traditional dances, they often wear leopard pelts, which are very important to the religious community. A leopard is one of the animals that actually has got power in terms of the strength, in terms of thinking, in terms of doing and being a leader in animals. So as we are wearing it, it's one of the things that we are saying, we are also following the leadership of the, of the leopard. But the reverence the Shembe Church has for the animal is also wiping it out. It's thought that community members own around 15,000 leopard skins and demand for pelts is high. We were running a long-term research project in northern KwaZulu Natal and Zululand, uh, looking at leopard biology, leopard ecology, and, um, and to do that we had radio collared numerous leopards, and we soon realized that many of these cats were disappearing. Um, we couldn't understand why, and at that time, um, Tristan Dickerson, who was, uh, who was heading up uh, that, uh, the field component of that study, um, heard about the Shembe Church, and that leopard skins were used as a for ceremonial purposes. Now there are fewer than 5,000 leopards left in South Africa. Over the continent as a whole, the big cats have disappeared entirely from about half the areas where they were once found. For several years, wildlife protection organization Panthera has been trying to convince Shembe church members that artificial pelts are just as good. They look astonishingly real and have one big advantage. The vital thing about this thing is cheaper. That one is costing like five grand or more. This one is cheaper. They don't charge us uh, about this thing. We get it, we get it for, uh, free. The first artificial skins were delivered in 2013, after years of negotiations with church leaders. At first, Panthera's representatives ran into a lot of resistance. Church members were worried that their old traditions would suffer. But gradually, more and more church members are wearing the artificial pelts. Panthera has already distributed 14,000 of them. Since the program started, demand for real pelts has fallen by around 50 percent. But far too many real skins are still being trafficked. You know, there's a lot of leopards that die. You know, and unfortunately, the leopard doesn't reproduce like other animals do. You know, it's a slow reproductive process. You know, and um, that's where we have a major problem. You know, um, a leopard in good times will produce three cubs. Out of those three cubs, maybe one will survive and become adult, but only has a 50% chance of reaching its first birthday. So those are the odds we're dealing with. Members of the Shembe Church have been rethinking their relationship to the big cat. And that's helping reduce pressure on the predator's population. But leopards still have many enemies, from trophy hunters to farmers worried about their livestock. There's still a lot of work to do to change people's views of animal skins as status symbols, to give the leopards of South Africa a chance at survival. And that wraps it up for us here on the show today. But should you have any stories to tell or photos to share with us, do not hesitate to visit our social media sites and those details of how you can do that are coming up at the end of the show. It's bye-bye from me here in Nairobi at the Nairobi National Park. And goodbye from Abel Kuta in Ogun State, Nigeria. Thank you for watching Echo of Africa, our European Pan-African magazine. We'll see you same time next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>